praise God. Give it honor to my pastor and first lady in their absence. I thank God for this opportunity to bring a word for you all, for all of us. Amen. If you all would go to Numbers 11, beginning at verse 18, and I'm going to be reading the New King James Version. Numbers 11, beginning at verse 18. Then you shall say to the people, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, and you shall eat meat. For you have wept in the hearing of the Lord, saying, Who will give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and you shall eat. You shall eat not one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you, because you have despised the Lord who is among you and have wept before him, saying, Why did we ever come up out of Egypt? I want to share a word briefly with you titled, Do You Really Need what you really want. Amen. So you are my printer ran out, so bear with me. I'm trying to use technology to go forth. But I'm I'm never surprised when pastor calls me up. The Holy Spirit always gives me um, a heads up. So when he texts me this afternoon, I just was like, okay, because I knew it was coming. And so even though I had already had, like, some things that I had been thinking about and meditating on, I always want a fresh word. I always want a right now word for the people of God right here, right now. And so I began to to pray to the Holy Spirit to show me what he wanted me to, to talk about. And he took me back just this morning. I was having a conversation with Phil. We were having breakfast. And I was telling him how heavy I had been, not because of what I'm going through, but just because of what I feel like everyone connected to me is going through and if you operate in the spirit of intercession then you understand the heaviness that comes with your circle your friends your family when they go through it does something to you and so just so many people connected to me so many people that are close to me have been just in what I felt like was just in a a, a, a need there was just so much need whether it was natural or spiritual or financial um there was just such a need emotional and i had even because i'm a fixer and i like to help when something is broken i want to fix it um i had to actually apologize to one of my friends this morning because she reached out to me and i was too rough i was rough with her because i felt like i've been trying to help and she hasn't been really receiving the help I've been trying, but she keeps, she's in this place of need. And so I was kind of like, well, c- you know, I'm trying to help. You won't take the, you know, and I was rough with her. And my, I had to pray that God, because I'm not God, it's not my job to, to, to do that. All I can do is be here for you, to pray for you, to love you. So I just asked that. I don't know what she's going through. I don't know what that feels like. Increase my compassion. Um, to just be able to be there for someone. And I feel like it, it's, it's my job to fix anything because it's not. But I had still have been struggling with just, you know, God, why is there such a need? Your word says, so I began to just put him in, the rem- in remembrance of his word, you know, um, ask and it shall be given. Knock and you sh- uh, um, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Um, ye have not because you ask not. I said, you know, Lord, they're asking, so why don't they have what they need? So the Holy Spirit began to minister to me, and he began to put me back in remembrance of his word. So I I took him to James 4 and 2, and he took me to James 4 and 3. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. So I was in my garage like, oh, okay, wait a minute. (laughs) You know, and I said... 
Well, when Solomon asked for wisdom and you gave it to him, because he asked. But then he began to, to, to just really teach me and, and show me and reveal to me Solomon had settled in his heart before asking for anything who God was to him. So he didn't have a desire to ask for anything material because he had already trusted God to provide those things. So because he had already settled in his heart who God was, then he was able to align his desires to God's desires for him. So he was able to ask what he really needed and also what God wanted for him. So that's when he took me to Numbers 11 with the children of Israel who began to complain in the desert, in, in the wilderness, because they didn't have what they wanted. And so I, he, he walked me through Numbers 11. And I'm going to start back at verse 1. It says, Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. For the Lord heard it, and his anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. So some died in their complaining. They didn't even get a, they didn't even get a chance to say, you know what, it ain't that bad. They died in the midst of their complaining. The anger of the Lord was kindled against them. And then the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. So he called the name of the place Tibera because the fire of the Lord had burned among them. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. Um, there is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. So that was funny to me. One, because they only remember the pleasures of Egypt, which weren't pleasures because of the situation that they were in. And it wasn't as bad as they were making it seem because they still had food. They just didn't have the food that they wanted. They, their body, they were not all dried up. They, <laughs> they had enough. They just didn't have what they wanted. And they didn't remember the manna. They didn't remember the bread of heaven. They didn't remember back in Exodus 16 when they really didn't have any food. And God granted them this manna. He fed them bread from heaven. And, and they had forgotten all about what God had already done. And don't we do that with our prayers? How many of us are actually walking like our current circumstances used to just be prayer requests? Like if you think about your life and you think about the peace that you pray for, if you think about the home that you pray for, if you think about even your current, your, the job that you pray for, whatever you were praying to God to, to give you, how many of us are, can, can look around and see the manifestation of those prayers and see that he's been faithful and see that he has answered? But how quickly do we forget how quickly do we say our being is all dried up? All we have is this manna before our very eyes. And how does that make God feel when he's been faithful and it's still not enough? Because we are praying out of our flesh and we are praying our heart's desire, but our desire is not aligned to God. Our, our, we, have not, we have replaced him with an idol. We have replaced him with what we want, not what we need, but what we want. And so um, Moses goes, and you know, he says, verse 7, Now the manna was like coriander seed, and its color like the color of bedellum. Well, in, in Exodus, it said that it tasted like honey cake. You know, it's different when you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and you finally get that prayer, and it's, ooh, this tastes like honey. And then you know, it's all right. You know, how quickly does it just go from, oh, that's so good. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad. Our, our being is all dried up because all we got is this dry man of bread. We don't, I remember when I had fish and leeks and garlic and onions and cucumbers. Never mind the slavery, the bondage. <laughs> We're not thinking about that right now. We're just thinking about the, that taste, that lust, that flesh that was pleased, that was satisfied because it's not what we need, but it's what we want in the moment. So, 
The word says the people went about and gathered it, ground it up on millstones or beat it in the mortar, cooked it in pans and made cakes. And the taste was like the taste of pastry prepared with oil. And when the dew fell on the camp in the night, the manna fell on it. Then Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, everyone at the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was greatly aroused. Moses also was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you afflicted your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you have laid the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I beget them? That you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a guardian carries a nursing child to the land which you swore to their fathers. Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they weep all over me, saying, Give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. If you treat me like this, please kill me here and now if I have found favor in your sight and do not let me see my wretchedness. That's a whole other message. <laughs> Moses, I'm sick of these people. I didn't ask to be their pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They don't want to listen. I didn't, <laughs> you said you was going to do this. I need you to. Okay. So the Lord said to Moses, gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting that they may stand there with you. Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you may not bear it yourself alone. Amen. It's a message for leadership. It is. Then you shall say to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, and you shall eat meat. God is saying, okay, you want some meat? You shall eat meat. For you have wept in the hearing of the Lord, saying, Who will give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and you shall eat. You shall eat. Down to verse 21. And Moses said, I'm sorry, no, over to 31. So Lord says, you going to eat? You want some meat? Here you go. Here is the meat. Now a wind went out from the Lord, and it brought quail from the sea, and left them fluttering near the camp about a day's journey on this side and about a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp and about two cubits above the surface of the ground. And the people stayed up all that day, all night, and all the next day, and gathered the quail. He who gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, before it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was aroused against the people, and the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. So he called the name of that place Kibroth Hatava, because there they buried the people who had yielded to craving. And that word Kib Kibroth Hatava means the graves of greediness. So the people asked amiss because what they thought they really needed, they only just wanted. God was giving them what they needed, and that wasn't enough. So he gave them what they wanted, and he gave it until it killed them. And it wasn't the craving of the meat that was the sin. It was his the doubting of his ability to supply, his willingness to supply, his desire to supply their need, every need, and also the, the doubting of his concern for them, his concern for their welfare. He's done so much. He's parted the sea, literally. He's, you know, he's done all of these things for you, and it's still you don't believe that he cares enough to give you what you need, that what you have, it's all you need. And he told me in the garage, he said, it is only by my grace that, you, that, that some of us don't have what we think we want. It's my grace for you. It's my love for you. 
that has kept that away from you because what you think you want, you don't really need. And if you got what you really wanted, you wouldn't know what to do with it. It would make you sick. It would do more harm than good, yet you keep asking. And my prayer, let my prayer be, Lord, don't give me what I want, but give me what I need because I want your perfect will for my life. Don't give me, don't give me your permissive will. Don't give me the father that gives in because I keep begging and asking. Give me your perfect will that's going to be aligned to my destiny and to my purpose. And if that means I have to be content with having only what I need and having to wait for some of these desires and some of these wants, Lord, I want them on your timing. And, Lord, keep me in remembrance of what you've already done. Keep me in a spirit of gratitude, of seeing, your, of seeing the prayers that, that I'm walking in, of seeing the manifestation of what I've asked for. Don't let me think about my Egypt in pleasure. Don't let, me, don't, let me, don't let me long for Egypt, for what you got me out of, from what you brought me from. God forbid I, I get to a place of discontentment that I begin to long for Egypt. So we complain about our mammon. But that used to be the very thing that we prayed for. We might complain. We complain about about our marriage, right? When we pray for a spouse, we complain about. We used to pray to be the lender and not the borrower. And then when people come borrow money, we get mad. But we pray for that though. We said, I want to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, above only and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower. Then people go, hey, I need money. Folks always ask. But that's what you prayed for. You could be the borrower, but you're longing for Egypt. You're longing for the time when people didn't ring your phone, but that's because you ain't had no money. Don't long for Egypt. Don't, Don't forget about the bondage of Egypt because you focused on what was pleasurable right now. Yes. So we got, he gave them exactly what they asked for until it made them sick. So, and then he began to show me, he said, so when you line up yourself, when, you, when you're in my will, your prayers will change. And you will begin to ask for what you need and not what your flesh wants, not what's most comfortable, not what's easiest. So some of us who may be asking for a spouse should actually be asking to be healed from past hurts that create that loneliness that we have or that desire to just have someone. If this is you, not everyone who's praying for a spouse, but some of us, are asking amiss, and that's why we haven't gotten what we what what we think we what we think we need, right? Because because that's not gonna fill the void. A husband won't fill the void. A wife won't fill the void. You have to be whole before marriage. Some of us who are asking for physical healing should actually be asking for the sufficiency of God's grace. Some of us who are asking for more influence and greater ministry should be asking for greater stewardship over what we've already been given. Some of us who are asking for more time in the day to do what God has given us to do should be asking for the faith to walk away from the things we are doing that he has not given for us to do. Some of us who are asking for more money should be asking for God to give us greater discipline with the money we have. When God is on the throne of our hearts, his desire, our desire becomes his desire. So it's easy for us, for him to give it to us. Because we are aligned. I had, when we went to the, the ladies went to the beach, we had a great time. But it was a, it, it was a spiritual thing. I know, I know for all of us, but for me, On the last day when we were getting ready to leave, there was such a spirit of gratitude in that place because we had all gone through so much to get there. 
and we had all had our own issues that we were battling, our own, own stuff we were going through, but, we, but God graced us to be able to go. We had desired it, and he gave it to us. And so when we were leaving, it wasn't even like a sad thing. It wasn't like a, oh, man, I got to leave. It was just like, God, I thank you. And so we gathered, um, when we got there the first day, as I had been preparing for the trip, I like to, you know, I'm a planner and travel, so I like to look up, you know, top ten things to do in Orange, you know, I'm looking up all the stuff. And what, <laughs> what I kept seeing was people talking about the dolphins and being able to see the dolphins playing in the water. So that, that tripped me out. I was like, okay. So when we got to our place, um, I went to the balcony, and I'm looking on the balcony, and I'm like, okay, where are these dolphins? So I don't see anything, and we go to the beach. Um, and as soon as we hit the beach, this lady uh, standing on the shore, she like, you, you see them dolphins? And I'm like, oh, what? I'm on the, <laughs> I'm on the shore like, what? You? And I'm looking around. They talk about they see them. I'm like, they lying. I don't see no dolphins. I'm like, where are these dolphins? <laughs> I didn't see them. Everybody else could see them but me. So I'm like, okay. Every day I was on the balcony. That, is that one? No, nah, that ain't one. So the last day we gathered, we came into the living room and we, we gathered for prayer before we got on the road. And it was just like a, it was the, sp- the spirit of prayer was in there. It wasn't just a routine. Come on, we finna go. We finna pray. Like, it was like, we have to pray right now. And we prayed until, I mean, the spirit of God fell in that living room upon us and it was just beautiful. I mean, we're crying, we're hugging, we're, I mean, it was glorious, and I promise y'all, I turned my head and looked out, and I, y'all know I'm crying anyway, but <laughs> I turned my head and looked out the window, and I could see, <laughs> and tears started rolling. A lady Ross walked over to me, and she, she looked to see what I was looking at, and she said, he didn't forget about you. He, he didn't forget. And it was like, and, and I could hear God say, I know what you desire. I know what you want. And don't think because I make you wait that I don't know. And that's the word he wanted me to bring tonight is he knows what we desire. We just have to make sure that we are delighting in him that we are delighting ourselves in him, that when we wake up, he's on our mind, that we set our affections upon him each day, that we ask him, what can I do for you? Lord God, I surrender all, whatever it is, I put my to-do list to the side. We get so busy. People are hurting. And they need us, and they're looking for the church to be the light. And we're so focused on our own stuff and our own flesh and our own needs. Now, if it's, if it's mine, I got you. You know, I know what my kids need. I know I'm paying attention to them, but that's not who only who we're called to. And we get so caught up in, in, in what I need and what, well, what I think I need or what I want um, that we miss it. So just being sensitive to his voice, to his will for us. And, and as we delight ourselves in him, our prayers will change. Our desires will change. The word says that contentment with godliness is great gain. When we learn to be content in who God is and what he's doing in our lives. The wor- and the word also says that, that blessings will, will, will overtake us, will chase us. We don't have to, it, does, it, it won't have to be so hard when it's his will for you. If you delight yourself, it's effortless. It's not easy. You got to work, but it's effortless. So we have to remember to want to differentiate our wants from our needs, to know the difference. Do we really need this or do we want it? Now, if I need it, I need to be asking for it. But if I want it, I just need to make, Lord, this is my desire, but your will be done. This is how Jesus prayed. Lord, 
if it be your will, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, your will be done. Lord, if I can have this promotion, Lord, I want it. But nevertheless, let your will be done in my life. But what I need is contentment. That's what I need. I would like to have this, but what I need is grace. What I need, God, is your peace. What I need, God, is your favor. These things will be nice on top, but Lord, let your will be done in my life. We got to be grateful, kind, encouraging, selfless. And we got to choose, we got to be willing to choose manna over mammon. We got to be using, be, be willing to, to choose God's provision, whatever it looks like, over what we treasure or value. Mammon is not just money. It's whatever you value, whatever you treasure. That can't be more enticing to you than what God has provided or what he's willing to provide for you. And he wants us as the people of God, and this is a whole other message, and I'm not going to go there, but we have to change our relationship with money. We have to change the way that we view money. Never in the word does it tell you what to do with your money for you. And yet, when we get our money, that is the first thing on our mind, is what do we want to do for us, and then I give, and then I'll sow, and then I'll store up for my inheritance, for my heirs. But it's, that ain't what the word says. It's the opposite. And, and, I, and I've, I'm passionate about that topic because I've seen God move in my life from just the fear of just, I can't, I can't let it go, to like, and it, never having to worry about anything since. Just understanding the principles. There's so many principles on money. When we, when he's dealing with us about about becoming slave owners to our brothers and sisters. I'm telling y'all, we loan money and then we keep a. Tr- this is telling me seven. No, the word says give and don't expect to get it back. If you do, God bless them. But if you don't, you're not even supposed to be looking for it. That's godly biblical principle, and it works when you work it. But we have to, money is not our source. It is a tool. It is a resource. It can't be your treasure. I'm sorry. Amen. 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 Some tissue. So the doors of the church are open. If you know, you have, there are some things you've been asking for that you're not sure if this is really what you want or if it's what you need we can pray together corporately for God to help to realign our hearts to make sure that we are at, we are praying in his will that we're not praying amiss amen that God, that whoever was supposed to be here tonight, that this word would be for them. So whether or not you're ready to receive it, but I know it's not just for Sister Joe. Amen. I know that we all have some desires that are either not aligned to his will right now in this season of our life, or we're not sure because it's our flesh and we're all human and we all want things but we want to make sure that what we want is what God wants for us in this season right now for us if you've had prayers that have seemed to go unanswered 
this could be that situation. Because the word says, ask and you shall receive. So if you haven't received, you could be praying amiss. And that energy and that, that emotion, that, that focus could be redirected to where God would actually have you to be. Bow your heads wherever you are. Father God, Lord, I thank you for this word. Lord God, I thank you for the, your desire to see us grow, Lord God, for your desire to see us move forward, Lord God, not to just come and be saved, Lord God, but to thrive in your word, to thrive in your principles, Lord God. Lord, you have laid them out, Lord, for us to follow. Lord, help us to be mindful. Lord, give us wisdom concerning your principles. Lord, give us wisdom even concerning this season, Lord, where we feel like we don't have what we want, Lord God. Remind us, Lord God, how you have provided, Lord God. Remind us how mindful you are of us, Lord God. Lord, remind us of your word that says that even the hairs on our head is numbered, Lord God. Lord, you are concerned with everything that concerns us, Lord God. So we repent right now for even complaining, Lord God. Lord, we repent for longing for Egypt, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your grace that has brought us to this moment. We thank you, Lord God, for the manifestation of our prayers, Lord God. We thank you for the intangible, Lord God. God, and for the immeasurable God, for your peace, Lord, for your grace, for your favor, Lord, for your love, for your provision, for your protection, Lord God, we thank you for those things that we can't put our finger on, Lord God, but that keeps us from day to day, Lord God. Lord, and as we wait, let us wait patiently with contentment as you manifest those desires, Lord God. Lord, line us up with your will. Lord, as we delight ourselves in you, Lord, as we give ourselves away each and every day, God, to your plan and purpose for our life, Lord. Line us up, Lord, that we may see even the manifestations of our wants, Lord God. Hallelujah. In godliness, Lord God. In righteousness, Lord God. Not not out of the lust of our flesh, Lord God, but in the abundance of your glory, Lord. We thank you in advance for changing even our mindset, even the way we think about our situation, Lord God. Right now, you're renewing our mind and you're bringing us anew. Bring us out and up anew in you, in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.